Hi, I'm Dr. Chandrasekhar P, Senior Consultant and Head of Orthopedics, Sakra World Hospital. When we talk about common injuries around the knee, it may be either due to sports, it can be to slip and fall in the home, it can be due to road traffic accidents, or it can be just a trivial uh, fall on the road. Whenever a knee, in, knee is injured by any of this mechanism, either there can be a fracture, there can be soft tissue injury. What are these soft tissue injuries? These soft tissue injuries are either ligament injuries, meniscus or rubber pad injuries, or cartilage injuries around the knee. So as you see this knee, the knee is made up of thigh bone, leg bone, and kneecap bone. It is made up of four ligaments, two on the side, one in the front, and one at the back. The two ligaments on the right side are called the collateral ligaments. This is called inner collateral. This is called outer collateral. The inner collateral ligament is called MCL or medial collateral ligament. Outside collateral ligament is called lat lateral collateral ligament. The front ligament is called the ACL and the back ligament is called the PCL. Most of the ligament injuries around the knee are due to ACL or the front ligament injuries. Luckily, the side ligament injuries called MCL and NCL, most of the times we can get away without surgery by man managing just conservatively with by managing conservatively with braces and physiotherapy. But the two ligaments, the front ligament called the ACL and the back ligament called PCL, since it is an intra-articular ligament, the ligament inside the joint, there is bathing or there is frequent irritation of the synovial fluid of these ligament injuries and healing is not, healing unfortunately does not occur. The stretch of the ACL or the PCL ligament, that is the anterior cruciate ligament, posterior, posterior cruciate ligament, the stretch heals, but a tear does not heal. So, usually and for most of the times, we perform surgery for this full ligament injuries of the ACL and also for the PCL. These ligament injuries are performed through a technique, keyhole technique called arthroscopy, where we take your tendons, couple of centimeter incision below the knee joint and we harvest your hamstring tendon. This is stitched to become, this is stitched like a new ligament and through the keyhole surgery, we make holes in the leg bone and the thigh bone, pass this graft and stitch with the screws which will dissolve in the bone. And also in the PCL, the same technology, keyhole surgery technology is advised. So there are times where patients do come that they already have an injury, they underwent an ACL, again they had a twisting mechanism of injury and again ACL was re-ruptured. Then we can use the tendon from the opposite leg or in our hospital we do perform something called cadaver uh, hamstring tendons or cadaver tendons where we get the tendons from the cadaver lab. So we make that, we stitch it like the new tendon, new ligament and perform the procedure. Apart from the ligament injury, the most common, second most commonest injury is the meniscus or the rubber pad injury. The knee, the meniscus, there are two types, inner meniscus and outer meniscus. These are C-shaped structures. This helps to avoid the rubbing of the thigh bone with the leg bone, acts like a shock absorber. Whenever these meniscus are cut, it is diff meniscus are cut, the biomechanics of the meniscus changes and it will not be acting like a shock absorber and the load transmission through the thigh bone or in to the leg bone or to in the joint is higher. So this leads to the soft points called cartilage to wear and tear because there is no cushioning the meniscus which is functioning. So these meniscus are divided into three zones, outer zone, mid zone and inner zone. The meniscus has blood supply only in the outer zone and some part of the mid zone, but it does not have any blood supply in the inner zone. So basically they are again divided, outer zone is called red red zone, mid zone is called red white zone and the inner zone is called as white white zone. The tears in the outer zone and red red zones are always, the red red zone and the white red zones are always repaired. The tears in the inner zone or the white white zone is not repaired because there is no blood supply. If you do not repair the meniscus and if you trim the meniscus which is can be repaired, then the, there will not be any meniscus. This will increase increased contact pressure between the thigh bone and the leg bone which will leads to cartilage wear and tear. So to do this meniscal repairs which is done for the red zone and the red white zone, there are many techniques called as outside in technique, all inside technique and inside out technique. The tears which are present in the front half of the C can be done with a technique called outside in technique. The tears which are there in the back are can be done in two technique called all inside technique and inside out technique. What I perform is all inside technique. These all inside techniques are cosmetically, we do not have to make bigger incision through the small puncture holes on the knee. These all inside repairs can be performed. So today I am going to, now I am going to demonstrate one of the all inside devices. This is a meniscus model. I am going to demonstrate how an all inside device work for a meniscal repair.
So think this is the inner meniscus, this is the outer meniscus, this is the front part, this is the outer back portion, this is the front, this is the front part of the inner meniscus, back part of the outer inner meniscus, front part of the outer meniscus, back part of the outer meniscus. So the front half of both the inner and outer meniscus can be repaired with something called outside in technique where there are some sutures which pass into the meniscus and repair. The back portions cannot be repaired in outside in technique because there are all arteries and vessels in the back portions of the uh, just behind the back portions of the medial and the lateral meniscus. Think that see just I have created a small meniscal terrier rent now. Just imagine this is this is called the outer zone, mid zone and inner zone. Inner zones repairs cannot be repaired because it does not have a blood supply. Mid zone and outer zone needs to be repaired. So the outer zone and the mid zone repairs in the back portion of the inner and outer meniscus can be, can be repaired by a device called all inside devices. These are all devices which are uh, made up of a plastic handle which will dispose the implants or sutures and repair this meniscus. The best part about these devices is they can be used with just small puncture holes in the knee unlike the inside out technique where or the outside in unlike the inside out technique which is the other technique used for meniscal repair for the back portion meniscal repair we don't require to make bigger incision it is just with one or two puncture holes we can perform the surgery now i have done i have done a small induced uh, tear on this model i'll just show how this is the all inside repair devices which we use so what we do is we go inside the meniscus and we through the keyhole surgery camera we visualize and these devices go inside the knee and we place the meniscus stitches. So this is one stitch this comes out like this and then I go to the second portion of the tear and, and try to depart two devices here. If you see here now, now I have taken out in, in the rent above and below the rent I have passed this devices called meniscal, I have passed these sutures through the all inside devices called meniscal repair devices. When I try to pull this, now the knot is formed on the, on the, on the tear. So now you see this was a tear. So I have put one stitch above, one stitch below and then made a knot. This is called all inside because everything is done inside. There is no incision from outside. All the, the this is called all inside device because we do not have to pass the needle from inside to outside or outside to inside like those techniques. Here the knot is done without having to making any rent on the skin from outside. Just through the arthroscopy portal we can repair this. So you see this is the first implant which is deployed. This is the second implant which is deployed. Exactly perpendicular to the tear we have made this stitch. There are many meniscal tears. One something called longitudinal tears, some are called radial tears, some are called bucket handle tears where the entire meniscus is cut and lying in the center. So all these type of tears in the back portion of the meniscus can be repaired by these all inside devices. And over the last, uh, I am repairing the meniscus over the last 10 years and performing more than 8 to 9,000 meniscal repairs. Now I have decided this all inside, now I know these all inside devices are very sleek easy to perform and lesser in incision and then it is faster and very cosmetic and they give a very snug stitch. Meniscal tears, whenever it is repairable, please repair because if we remove the meniscus which had to be repaired, this meniscus will never be there in our body in the knee and this increases lot of contact points between the, the thigh cartilage and the leg bone cartilage and increases the pressure which ends up in arthritis or cartilage wear and tear in future. So the dictum is any repairable meniscus please repair any of the three techniques outside in, inside out, all inside techniques. As I have demonstrated today what is all inside technique especially the back portion of the meniscus both and inner and outer meniscus these all inside devices are used which is cosmetically better, smaller incision and faster surgery and more accurate in placement of the stitches. I always recommend meniscal repair is the best choice whenever the meniscus can be repaired. Thank you.